All right. 5.4b, preparing your worksheet and financial statements, journalizing, adjusting entries, and posting to ledger accounts. We're going to go really quick today through the formatting, so you guys are going to have to keep up or go home and watch because we're down to T minus an hour and 10 minutes. So we're going to blitz. Um, so when I build this thing, we're going to build very quickly. Our instructions are Raul Rojas owns Rojas Estate Planning Investments. The trial balance of the firm for June 30th, 2013, the first month of operations, is shown below. Perfect. So we can see it below. It's already typed out for us. I'm going to go ahead and type in here problem uh, 5.4b. And I'm going to just start right off here. Rojas Estate Planning and Investments, I think is what they called it. Worksheet. Uh, we're going to say the worksheet. And this is the month ended June 30th, 2013. Excellent day. Account name. I'm just going to go down on page 149. I'm just typing out what we have right here. So cash accounts. Advertising. Prepaid rent. Equipment. Equipment, accounts payable, Paul Rojas, capital, did I misspell something? And your name, Paul. Yeah. Could be your wife. Yeah. Bing. Now I'm going to go through. I'm not saying you have to be done right now. Don't have a panic attack. I'm just going to show you the next one. I widen my column A. I'm going to put up next to account name debit. Excuse me, I'm going to put up here trial balance right above. I'm going to do debit and credit. I'm going to merge my cells right above where it says trial balance so we can see that it's over that. I'm going to fill in all the numbers they gave me, 19,700. Accounts payable, 10. Total these suckers up. Okay, so I'm, I just built my little worksheet, essentially. I'm going to do something a little crazy. You can follow or not follow. 
but I'm going to merge and center all these things up at the top so that they are over the columns they're over. And then this is not something you would normally do, but I'm going to do it to make it easier as we look at this. I'm going to highlight this row. I'm going to fill it in with a light blue. Okay, I'm going to highlight this row, fill it in with a light blue. I'm going to highlight this row, Oops. fill it in with light blue. And I'm doing that just so we can keep them separated as we look at it, so that it doesn't get all jumbled up too bad. Walk around, see where everybody is typing. You're debiting, crediting your trial balance. Uh, no, no, it's, it's all good. You're doing it your way. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Nick's getting ahead of me. He's making it all look fancy. I like it. It's not adding up. No. If it's not adding up, that is a personal problem. It looks good. You're like, I, I got this. It looks good. So what's broken? What's the first time it's a pretty good show, huh? I'm going to copy and paste my little sum formula down here. I guess I didn't make all these comma style. Found it. Wrong side. Transposed. Psh, I hate that. Don't you hate that? All right. So we got some numbers in. We're going to read through this problem. It says complete the worksheet for the month. Prepare an income statement. Statement of owner's equity. Uh, journalize. At the end of the month, we have, so we're going to do all this stuff, but we need to also, um, go through and the end of the month adjustments must account for the following. Supplies were purchased, so I'm on A right now, 5.4B, and I'm on instruction A alpha. The supplies were purchased on June 1st, 2013. Inventory of the supplies on June 30th, 2013 showed the value of $3,000. What do I do? What are my adjustments? Nick, Nick one, what do you think we're going to do here? Uh, we're going to credit supplies. Credit supplies what? Minus 3,000? So we're going to credit 3,000? <coughs> Right? 
You're close. You're close. You're, you're a little, yeah, Mr. Tuck, why don't we fix it? You guys are both you guys are both knocking on the door right now. I told you they're going to tell us this problem two different ways. Remember? What are they saying in the problem? Okay, we don't even know what this is, but we know that it's going to end up at three. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you were saying we needed to credit the, the 3,000. Yeah. All right. So I'm just trying to get you. You guys are thinking it through. It's okay. We're newbies. It's okay. So boom, right there, I have 4,600. Now, on our test, you're going to have a space to put the number or the letter of the instruction in. Okay? So you would put an A next to it. I'm not going to do that right now because we could make another column here and put A. Now, if we do it on one side, what do we got to do? The other side. On the other side. Where are we going to put it? Supplies, Supplies expense. expense. Boom. So we're going to say equals. I'm just going to equal that same number over here. Notice that as I'm going, my numbers down here, because I have my sums, they are totaling up and balancing every single time I get done. Equals sum and grab everything above it. This one right here. So sum and parentheses. Okay, B. Nathan. The prepaid advertising contract was signed on June 1st and covers a four month period. You got it, Jerry? Jerry's looking at it like, no. <laughs> we have a four-month prepaid advertising contract. It's the end of the first month. What are we going to do for an adjustment? Think about the concept. What's the concept? Okay. We have a four-month prepaid contract. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you're starting, but you're, you're off track already. We have four months. What is our prepaid advertising right now? 14,400. We just, you, it's right here. Prepaid advertising is right here. You said this one down here. Yeah, yeah. Well, the answer is 3600. Yeah. How do we get it? Divided by four, that's all we're going to do. So we're, we're using one of the four months. So we're using a quarter of it. So all we're going to do is we're going to credit equals this divided by four. Gives us our number, 3,600. And, and then we're going to go down and put it under advertising expense. Equals 3,600. Staying in balance. Priscilla, you ready? Come on, help us out with Charlie. See if you can help me on this one. What do we do for Charlie? Um, rent of $3,000 expires during the month. What are we going to do? Well, we have prepaid rent of $36,000. So $3,000 of that is gone. He used it. So what are we going to do? Yes. We're going to? Good. We're going to debit or credit?
Well, if we debit something that's already debit, what are we doing? Oh, perfect. I knew she'd figure it out. Okay, there we go. We got that. So 3,000, what are we going to do to the other side? We have to do something over here. Where does it go? Rent expense. Bingo. Equals rent expense. We're just making the adjustments. The hardest part of the adjustments is typically figuring out how much. This one was simple. Because they told us it's 3,000. So we just know the number. We don't have to do any division. We don't have to say, oh, it's a half of it or a quarter of it. All right, Paul. Depreciation is computed by using the straight line method. The equipment has an estimated useful life of five years with no salvage value. Woo! Go to the What's my formula first? It's going to be divided by five. What's the formula? Just tell me the basic formula for depreciation. You took a picture of it three times. You don't look it up there. Just think about it. <laughs> Cost. Thank you. Cost minus salvage value divided by time. Woo! You guys are becoming accountants. I love it. All right. So that's exactly what it is. So what are we going to do here to figure out a depreciation? We're on D. We're just going to divide. Which is 4,800 by 5. Minus 0. Let's just do it all the way right here. I'm going to put it in parentheses just so I'm getting into a good habit of writing a proper depreciation equation. Divided by how many years? Five. Five years. Now, did we depreciate five years, though? We bought this. Okay, so we're just going to do one month? Yes, one month. So so Mr. Tuck has the right idea, right? What's the, what's the number we're going to use? 60. It's car payment, right? $800. Boom. Now, I stupidly, oh, I did it on the right side. Never mind. It's like, why did I do that on the wrong side? We're going to do depreciation expense for equipment. Just say equals this one. Bing. Do we have any more adjustments? Negatory, good buddy. All right, this, in my opinion, the hard part is all done. Okay? That should take you all of five minutes to do on a test. Maybe 10 minutes. And I'm telling you right now, that's the hard part. The rest of it is making Excel do its magic. I'm not joking. So we're going to sit here. If I come over here and I go to my adjusted trial balance, what should my formula be? Do I need a formula here for my adjusted trial balance on cash? No. No, because there's no adjustment. But, but to be smart and do it the correct way, I'm going to say this equals my debit. What? One more step, though. We're going to add any credit or debits and subtract any credits. That way we can use this same formula all the way through and it will do exactly what we need it to. We could, I'm going to drag it down after I go here because otherwise it's going to bring my definitive line so I'm going to make it one more time. I don't like that fat line coming with me. So here we go. Now anything that starts with a debit is going to work and let's make sure I hope it works for that one because yeah I just did a circular reference with this one because I calculated this based on that. Yeah, you're all going to get that. You have to do this minus this. There we go. So now we have our formula. Oops. Okay, now here we come on to our first one. I'm just going to actually hit Control C and copy this. And anywhere where I see a debit, I'm going to paste it. I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to paste it. Now I've done all of my debit sides. Do what? You just hit Control C on any of them. Control C, that'll start the copy. And then Control V is in Victor. Pastes on the two that have debits. That's it. 
Now we have some that have credit transactions. They start off as credits or they never had anything, so they're going to be credits. So this one's going to equal the credit minus a debit plus a credit. You got what? I'll tell, oh, the one that went, went blink? It's because what we had done before was we had said this minus the number that they gave us equals this. Well, then when we come down and we say the formula we wrote here is this plus this minus this equals this, we've just created a circular formula where we got rid of a piece of the puzzle that we had to have in order to do it. So I had to just go put the numbers in. I had to create it like it was a normal one. Well, I, I, the beauty is if you do this, like if you do exactly what I'm telling you right here, and I become a total jerk like my last accounting instructor I ever had, and I say, now let's change all the first numbers. If you change every number at the beginning, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have everything come out right because it's all formulas. It's not you typing in figures at that point. Does that? Yes. Did I say that? I forgot about that. Look at this. You guys are getting all sorts of extra credit. Ah, there you go. I like it. I totally forgot. That's why I said remind me. I don't think I said that. I'm just kidding. OK, then I'm going to go ahead and take this one that has the credits, and I'm going to paste it, paste it, paste it. That one is, oh, these are debits that we didn't put in over here. Nobody even caught that. So I'm going to copy a debit one. There we go. Uh-oh, something's wrong. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring this one over. There it goes. But you notice we could all tell that something was wrong because it wasn't balancing. And this makes good sense, right, Annette? Because from here down is what? What, what statement does it go on? financial statements. Income. income statement right after fees income. So we're like, oh, I should have my income and then everything else should be a debit after that. So that does make sense. It's credits minus debits plus credits. And once again, I will post this to YouTube. And if you guys want to go home and study for tomorrow, that'll be a good thing to do. Because you can pause it, hit rewind. And that's why we're going to do equals D2. And that's why we're going to do equals D2. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they should have like a 30 second rewind button on YouTube, don't you think? I don't know why they don't have that. I love that in podcasts. OK, so we're going to come over to our next one. What are we going to do here, Ashley, for the income statement? <coughs> huh? All right, I'll go to Kevin. Kevin, what are we going to do here? What's our next step? I'm going to highlight this one all in yellow. It was all yellow. Yeah, I know. I should sing for a living. It's good. Uh, I wrote the song for you. What are we doing here, Kevin? You guys noticed that the minion's name is Kevin. I made it yellow like a minion. Never mind. I thought that was a that was a high level joke. That was I thought good. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So we're just going to bring those straight over. Equals this one. Equals this one. I'm going to drag that thing straight down. I got them all in here.
Now these don't equal. What's my problem? But everything is awesome, but it's not equal. <laughs> it should be equal. Starts with the N, ends in net income. Oh, net income. Okay. We need our net income. That's right. So, all right. I got your back. Okay. So we're going to, how are we going to calculate out the net income? We're going to take Nick. Equals 73,800 minus 20,900. 52.9 is our net income. We're going to say this one equals this plus this. And copy and paste the same thing. Equals the 20,000 plus the 52,900 equals 73.8. All I'm going to do is say copy and paste this over. It just moves the same formula. It's going to add everything above it, these two together. But they equal now. All the way over here, I'm going to put net income and this is going to be uh, like, yeah, you don't even need to put anything past there. So we have net income. I'm going to go ahead and draw me another line. Bottom border. I'm going to do me a double border right here. And finally, our last piece before we take our break. We did our net income stuff. Now we need to do our balance sheet. Before we even do the balance sheet, what was the little trick I taught you guys about down here, about the net income? You guys remember? I said I have a little accounting trick. Right here with this thing. Whoops, this thing. What's my trick with this 52,900? That goes into the capital. OK, but what are we going to do with it in the worksheet that's a really quick, we don't even have to think about it. We can just do it really quick. Where do we credit it? Come on. You guys don't pay attention ever. When I say, how about this? When I say I have a really good accounting trick for you, I swear to you, that's like one of those moments you should be like, what is he saying right now? Because he's going to make my life so much easier. Okay, so, okay, because I'm telling you that from experience. So, we're just going to hop it over to the balance sheet, right? We're just going to jump it over. We're just going to automatically put it over here. So we're just going to come over here and say equals this. I don't even have to calculate anything else out. I'm actually going to copy and paste these formulas over here because we're going to have it do the same thing. We're going to have them add out. Now we're going to go up and only take permanent accounts over. Since we have this number right here came across, 73,800, we are doing everything above that, which is all the cash, capital, all that stuff. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say this one equals all my stuff over here. And then I actually have, oh man, see there goes my, my stupid extra line I hate. Equals this one. And then we're going to take everything from the credit side before that 73,000. Now I'm going to bet money that if I scroll down, it's not going to equal, but after my net income's in there, I haven't even looked at it. It's going to equal. It's going to balance. Oh, oh, sometimes it's hard being the instructor. <laughs> so, okay, so it's like magic. They don't pay me enough. Okay, let me see here. Back out. There you go. So you should be able to see that. This is a completed worksheet. Of course, we don't have to have all the colors. I'm just trying to do that so we can see it easier. Anything that just popped everybody's noggin that didn't make any sense? Okay, then what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here. We're going to take a quick 10 minute break. 
and we will come back and we will do chapter six. Okay, listen up. This is important. I am on this one because we're going to go from here, and now we have to do all the other stuff that's required for this problem. Thank you very much, John, for reminding me. That was John Smith, just for YouTube's knowledge, uh, that reminded me. <laughs> and I just want to make sure that we all are, are aware of this. And so, having said that, if we look at what our test is going to be, Thank you for the Ninja Turtle advertisement. Now I'm going to get banned from YouTube. Um, if we look at our test, the good news is, is that we have a template here. We know exactly what they're looking for. So if we come back up here, we can see that this is exactly what we just did. It's exactly here. And we can look at it and say, okay, I'm going to have to put in my fees income. I'm going to have to put in all my expenses. Then I'm going to have to do my statement of owner's equity. So we're going to do these really quick right below in a fashion that's hopefully going to uh, work out pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and do our income statements first. Sorry, I thought I was going to the right one here. 5.4, let me jump over to this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just start my uh, income statements and everything. So I'm gonna put financial statements. This one's gonna be the income statement. Uh, you all right? Okay. Okay, the name of this company is Rojas Estate Planning and Investments. So I'm just going to, oops. You know, I'm going to show you another little trick. <laughs> Here's a little Excel trick. I could put that there, but once again, just like numbers, or I could just put equals Rojas. Boom, baby. Equals. Actually, this is going to be June. You all right there? Okay. <laughs> First uh, through the 30th, 2013. And we're going to go ahead and put revenue, fees, income. We're just building a financial statement. It's nothing too fancy. I could type it in, or, because Nick knows I want to see it done right, Nick too, that I could come over here and say, hey, my fee income was 73.8. I'm gonna take it right here from this one, my income statement. This is kind of giving me a good little view of what I'm gonna do anyway. Equals this. Then I have my expenses. My expenses include what? Advertise, well, watch this. <laughs> I'm gonna do it a fun Excel way. I'm gonna say equals advertising expense. Oh, I don't even have to copy it. I can just start dragging it. Bam! Oh yeah, that was awesome. Okay. Did that? <laughs> Nick's like, what's happening? Okay. It doesn't matter what's in the cell in Excel. If we say it equals what's in it, it's going to bring it over. So all I did was I created my first one as an equals. I put it here, advertising expense. Hit enter. And then if I just grab the bottom right of it, well, it's like copying and pasting it all the way down. It will bring all those things over. Just like you do with the numbers. It's brilliant. I mean, I, I wish it wasn't so easy being this smart. But <laughs> I have to build you slowly but surely, young Padawans. So, so <laughs> I'm actually going to move this over uh, another column just so I don't have to expand anything. So I'm going to say this one equals the 73,800. And then check this out. Uh, I'm going to go down here to advertising expense. So this one equals what? 3,600. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drag this thing down. <gasps> Total expenses equals the sum of all of these bad boys. So my net income equals this minus this. 52.9. Where have I seen that number before? Oh, kiss, kiss, kiss A. Here it is, right here. 52.9. Bam. I did it right. I'm buying QuickBooks. <laughs> but it is fascinating, isn't it, that you can do this in Excel and see how it's working. 
I mean, it's just somebody sat down and written a computer program to do all of this automatically. So that's the fun part. So we've done our income statement. I'm going to go ahead and just make these look a little bit more like <coughs> financial statements here. What's my next statement, Annette? Owner's statement of owner's equity. I'm going to skip a couple lines. I'm going to say this one is equals this. It's a statement of owner's equity. It's June 30th, 2013. When I create a statement of owner's equity, I start with what? What kind of capital? Beginning capital. June 1st. How much do I have to start? Sixty thousand one hundred. It's up here. Paul Rojas Capital. I'm going to add my net income into it. Net income equals. I'm going to just pull it straight from here, right above here. Less any withdrawals. I can get that number from up top. Here we go. Draws. Drawing. <coughs> Which gives me my addition to capital. I can say equals this minus this. Whoops. So I can say my ending capital. On June 30th, it's going to equal. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to change where I put this one. I don't like how I have it there. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say equals this minus this because it says less. And then we have it together. So I should end up with $109,000 of capital. I'll zoom in for you at the end of the month. Good? Whoops, I don't know why it's jumping so much. That is my statement of owner's equity. My last statement is what? Balance sheet. Balance sheet. So we're going to run right into that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say copy and paste equals Rojas. This is going to be a balance sheet. And we're just going to do as of. June 30th, 2013. What do we start with in a balance sheet? We cover our assets. So what are our assets? I'm going to type it all in, right? Heck no, I'm going to say equals. Cash. I'm going to just drag this sucker down. Now I can drag it down way too far. Oh, I didn't. Let me see here. Now at accounts payable, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have gone there, so I can just come back up. Okay. <laughs> so we can see right where we're going. Is this too hard or too easy? Yes. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear, actually. Okay, good. Now. I'm going to come over one extra row because I need to make sure I have a contra asset account, which is going to be on the inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over one more column, excuse me, and I'm going to say my assets, my cash, whoops, my cash is going to equal, I think I went too far, there we go, equals, come up here, just grab this one, drag this sucker down. Now, I could do my equipment, but I'm not going to right now because what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let this go. I'm going to come over here for equipment. I'm going to say equals the 48,000 equals the 800. That is the depreciation. So my net book value for my equipment is actually going to be this minus this. So then when I say total assets, what's up? Come on, 
You all right? Yeah, minus 800, because this is a contra asset. It is slowly but surely taking away and giving us the book value, which is right here. This is the book value of this. Well, we, we just add this column together. So that's something we're going to get good at in accounting. So when we have a column, we're going to total this one up, then it's going to go here. If we had another column, we'd total this one up before we bring it over here. We're going to get like three or four deep by the end of this whole thing, where we're doing sub tallies to get out. But we always know that we do the farthest one in, closest to the words, as we work our way out. So let's do liabilities. Do we have any liabilities? Oh, we do have accounts payable. Ta-da! What was our accounts payable? Well, I'm just going to come up here and say, here it is, accounts payable. Now, we, we've got our accounts payable. We've got our, wow, this thing is just jumping all over the place. Sorry, I'm just trying to move it just a little bit. Okay, I can only have it on one side or the other. Um, now we're going to go down and do our capital. Paul Rojas, isn't that his name? Where are we going to get this number from? From the one that we just finished from our ending capital number. Now, I don't know. It's looking pretty good, but I'm about to do my sum. So we're going to say total liability and owner's equity equals the sum of everything above it, <gasps> and these two numbers match, giving us a balance sheet. And I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see that. <clears throat> so what was your formula for Colorado? You tell me what the formula is. Plus no. We didn't even have to calculate anything. I just said equals where we got it from. Where did we get that number from? Where did we get it from, Ashley? From the, uh, Starts with the S. In the statement of owner's equity. Thank you. It's really hard to do that. I don't think you guys can appreciate how difficult it is to just abbreviate like that. No. <laughs> then I made you do Windows 8 first? Oh, QuickBooks first. <laughs> I'm like, Windows 8, what does that have to do with it? Yeah, I get it. All right, so we've got our balance sheet, but nay, nay. Nick 1 reminded me that we have to do more than that. Because we just, now, notice we didn't have, to, we're not going to have to type any of that stuff up tomorrow. Just understanding all those formulas, though, this is all done for you. We're just hitting, oh, here's capital equals. Where's the capital for the beginning? Oh, it's going to come over here. It's going to be the beginning capital. So it's on list 20. I could just come over here and say capital is going to be, I think that's on 20 right there. Click. Like I can actually, if we had time, I would go through and I would do every formula before I put one number in. And you would see that the entire worksheet would come out with corrects at the end of it. I wouldn't have to see one number. That's the goal. Nothing on this page. You do the, the thinking of what you need to have happen. Then you type your numbers in, and it will all come out correct. That's the goal. Yes? No. This is Excel. No. I mean, QuickBooks uses an income statement that looks just like this, because that's what an income statement looks like. <laughs> so, so I mean. Income statement is an income statement. Like I said, if you use QuickBooks, Mass90, White Plains, Peachtree, it doesn't matter. They're all going to give you the same thing for an income statement because that's what an income statement is. So you can look at an income statement. Let me go out here. Let's do yahoo.com. We can go to finance. Here's a thought. Let's get some credit ads. 
Thank you. Finance. I clicked finance, it gave me Discover Card app. That was kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to look for Apple. Search. AAPL, that's their stock ticker. And I know that because I own Apple. <laughs> so, so we, yeah, they are, which is before the split, $700 a share, which is the bomb. Okay. What'd you do? Don't roll his power cord. Okay, so we see this right here. We can look at this, and we have a bunch of information here, like a crazy lady from Salt Lake City. Uh, but if we go, yeah, hold on. If we go to uh, key statistics, where's, oh, right here, financials, income statement, click. Now, because it's a publicly traded company, they have to make this available to everybody. So we can click on an income statement. Now, I told you in the future, we're going to see these things looking for, because this gives us comparison year over year over year. So we could sit down and say, listen, total revenue. Now, this is in thousands, which means that we have to add another three zeros to the end of all of this. Okay? So every number has another three zeros on it. They've shortened it so that we can read it without as many zeros on it. So their total revenue was 100, hundred seventy billion. 170 billion. Okay? In... For the year ending September 28th, 2003. Tell me I don't know how to pick a stock. Okay, so, okay thank you. No, but uh, So we're just looking at this like, wow, that's awesome. Well, let's, let's compare it. Last year, they made $156 billion. Year before that, $108 billion. What do we know about this company right now? Revenue is going up. Okay? You guys now know that. You can look at these things, and you now know, because you're taking accounting, what these numbers mean. You're like, okay. Well, let's see, what's the gross profit? Let's look at profit here. We're gonna come down, we haven't even really gotten into gross profit, but they're telling us that they had, um, well, we gotta go through our expenses here. This is the gross profit section. Their net income in 2011, billion. 2012, 41 billion. 2013, Okay, anything we want to know? Why? Right, okay, so now we're wondering, wait, the revenue went up, but the income went down. What's happening at Apple? Why? Well, but why are they making more money, like bringing it in, but why is more money going out? Well, here we go. We can start looking at things like income before tax, 50 billion, 55 billion, 34 billion. Okay, so. Five billion, looks like something's happening here. You know, we could just start looking through this, but instead of just being a bunch of numbers on the page, we now have the guide to start saying, and we're gonna get way more into this as we go through accounting, like, oh, here now we can compare year over year, not just look at one year at a time, but now we can start seeing trends. We see graphs all the time in accounting and finance. It's because the graph is what lets us see is something going up, going down, and, and we can take a static shot at one moment in time, and we could say, okay, for instance, let's go to the balance sheet. I'm probably going to compare the balance sheets out. One, two, and three. So we have three years of the balance sheet. Remember, it's cumulative. The balance sheet doesn't reset every year. It's the same thing every year. We're just doing with what happened in that year. So assets. They had $116 billion in assets. Then they went to 176. Now they're at $207 billion in assets. So maybe they're not collecting as much income but their, their value, their asset base has doubled practically in two years. Ah, here's another little indicator. Okay, what are they doing? Are they buying companies maybe? Because that's what they've been doing. They've been buying a lot of companies and nobody knows because they don't advertise it. So they've bought like 36 companies in the past two years and no one hears about any of it but Beats. You know, like we all heard about Beats because it was a big, po big popular one. It was their biggest acquisition. But we're like, okay. Hmm, interesting. So their total current long-term assets, let's see, they have some. Um, did you guys know that they, I believe, are the single largest investment portfolio in the world? They have so much money in cash that they invest that they are like the single largest fund in the world. Like they actually invest their money because it's sitting in the bank. So they have a lady who runs it who's amazing. And 
she's in control of more money than like the state of California's pension fund or something like that. You know, it's, it's huge. It's a gargantuan amount of money that they just invest all the time. So we could look at it and say, huh, well they have long-term investments, $106 billion. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> like that's, that's, look at this. In two years, they went from $55 billion in long-term like securities, that's like stocks and stuff like that they're gonna be invested in, to 106, they are spending a lot of money on these things. But we can now see that and say, there's value possibly in that. They, they're not just pissing away money, they're doing something, they've doubled how much they have in assets, yes. What's intangibles? Intangibles, patents, trademarks, uh, copyrights, anything that they have like that that you can't touch, goodwill is another one that we use. We'll get into that in like chapter 20. But, um, so that's not goodwill the company. No, goodwill is when you buy, okay, so like if you were to take and they buy Beats, let's just say, and Beats on the books is only worth 1.5 billion. I'm not saying that's what it is, but let's just say it's only worth 1.5 billion. Apple comes in and says, we really want to buy you, we'll give you $3 billion. Dr. Dre's not an idiot. He wants to be first billionaire rap star from the West Coast, as he said. Sold. I'll come work for you. <laughs> Here's my company. Done. Well, Apple can only show 1.5 billion on their books because that's what it's worth. So the rest of it goes into goodwill. That's like a little, it's another little tool that we've created so that we can keep track of. They spent $3 billion. We have to account for it. What did they get for it? They got goodwill. They got the Beats name, the, the hype behind it, that kind of stuff. And so it goes in and they have to depreciate that off just like everything else. So that's just something that they get. But notice that this is, you know, this is a little more complicated, but we can come down and see that they all equal, that we have all this net tangible assets. Um, but we can see that they have total liabilities. It's interesting too. Their long-term debt, look at what they've had, nothing. Now all of a sudden they have 16 billion in debt. Why? Well, I know why. It's because they financed all their dividends through debt. So they had other investors that came in and are now making money off of them paying their original investors. And it's just a, instead of just paying out the cash, they're like, hey, let's take out a loan. People will loan us money at a really low interest rate because we're Apple, we have tons of money. So they financed it and then they, they got to write off the tax. They have a tax write off for any of the interest that goes for borrowing. Anyway, it's, it's like really, they have some amazing accounting people in there that do some crazy stuff. But I'm saying, so somebody might look in here and say, but wait, they have 17 billion of debt right now. Ooh, something's going wrong at Apple. No, it's not. They're doing that on purpose. That was all intentional. They don't have to do that. They can do that. How much money do they have in the bank? Whoop. Come back up here. Cash equivalents. They can write a check tomorrow for $14 billion without cashing in anything. They have $14 billion of cash. That's making it rain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then look, but not only that, they have short-term investments of 26. They have receivables coming in from all over the world for another $24 billion. Can you imagine having accounts receivables with $24 billion? Whoa! That's, we just want 24,000 in our receivables, right? So we can look at all this stuff. We can be like, man, this is pretty incredible what they've got. And we can look at it, put it all together, and they have some really intense stuff that we can now recognize, though, because we can read it. It's not just Apple. Get the balance sheet for Goog. Google. No balance sheet data. Oh, they're going out of business. No. FB. Advertising. Facebook. Here we go. Balance sheet. Now we look at Facebook. Let's see. Is this in thousands? Yes. All numbers are in thousands. So in June. They reported, now this is quarterly, not yearly. I wonder if I can, oh, here we go, annual data. Here we go, year over year. So Facebook had six billion in assets and now they have 18 billion in assets over two years. But when we think about Apple versus Facebook, would you really think that they're that different in companies? Like Facebook's everywhere, right? But they're a tiny company compared to someone like Apple. I mean, that's a big company, but Apple could, like if we went to market cap, let me see if I can find a market cap number. It's 
going to be in the original part. Um, FB. So we're going to get here and we're going to look at right here. Where's market cap? Market cap, 194 billion. So they have so much stock out. This is the stock out times the price of the stock gives you what's called market cap. And this is how much the company's worth, essentially. So 194 billion. So Apple couldn't quite buy Facebook for cash, but they could definitely buy 50% of it and still have tons of cash in the bank. They could own it and control it, do whatever they wanted with it at that point, if they wanted to. But we can sit here and see, okay, let's look at Google. Let's look at Google here really quick. Facebook's got an interesting model going on. Market cap for Google, 395 billion. Intel, 170 billion. I keep saying Apple should buy Intel. It's all right. Let's look at Apple. We didn't look at that, did we? <clears throat> 603 billion, and it should be a trillion dollars. I'm telling you, it should be. Like, we could have that argument all day long later, but 600 billion, it's the most expensive company in the world. Like, it's worth the, more, the most, okay? Well, we would argue that the government only takes, they don't make, and Apple's making, so. How about Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. Um, I think it's going to be CCE. Coke's worth 11 billion. They could buy Coke. Like, <laughs> oh, thanks. We got Coke. <laughs> free Coke for everybody at Apple. <laughs> get an iPad. You get your own free Coke all the time. Like, but isn't that amazing that now this allows us to look at the differences between two totally different companies, one in technology and one in soda. And we can look at it and say, here's market cap. We can go through their profit loss statement. We can see everything. It makes it equal. That's why gap is so important. That's why everything we've done in this class is so important is that we're going to tie together something that allows Michael Tuck to go out and invest in anything he wants. If he wants to own McDonald's, he can go to McDonald's. Look, we can just look it up. McDonald's but let's say but that's the point is that we all have the option McDonald's market cap 92 billion okay but if you want to go buy a piece of McDonald's it costs you $94 you can own McDonald's tomorrow I'm serious you could you start an e-trade account pay for a share you own a piece of it now is it a good investment I don't know we can look and see where the stock's been. We can see, maybe you think that their new healthy trend is going to push them back up. There's all sorts of things that go into that. But at least you can be informed because you have knowledge now about what these things are meaning. And it's only going to get better as we go through accounting. It's only going to unfold more information to you. You're going to be able to dig deeper. Like before we get to accounting 216, you're not going to know about looking at year over year. Right? But we're, gonna, we're slowly going to surely going to unveil these things one after one. That's why I said all the basic concepts are here in this class, and then we're just going to get way more complicated, way more like in depth to every little piece of it as we go through it. So we're out of time. Let me pause this. We're out of time tomorrow.